Certainly. Uh, and then just talking about the economy here and what's going on with the Fed, uh, John Stoltzfus over at Oppenheimer was on this program uh, last week. His latest note out today noting that the economy is in good enough stead to withstand no rate cut while the market appears a tad too convinced <coughs> of its rate cut. Uh, but, you know, Andy, in a piece today, you kind of make the case that the, uh, the Fed's coming rate cut doesn't make any sense. I, I think I've been sympathetic to the reasoning that Jay Powell has laid out, and I'm kind of of the mind that you don't have to like it, but here's why he's doing what he's doing. But as you see it right now, I mean, do you think the Fed is at risk of making a mistake that we'll look back on and think, boy, that was, that was obvious? I mean, obviously, Jay Powell knows things I don't know, by definition. But you just look the, at the face of it, Miles, and you've got you know unemployment at a 50-year low, the stock market at an all-time high, the economy purring right along, 3.1%. You know, I've said before, I can't remember when the unemployment rate and GDP growth were this close together. Right. Right? Those two numbers. They're basically the same place. It's amazing, right? Not in my lifetime. And so then you ask yourself why. Well, it's an insurance cut. And gee, is that the new mandate? Is that the new bar that has been set? Um, and I think that it you know, raises a lot of problems, potentially, in other words, when the economy truly needs a rate cut, there will be nothing left to cut. And then it's going to cause inflating, inflated asset prices. I think there's problems there that Mohammed El Arian was talking about. Now, Rick Reeder from BlackRock, who was in here earlier today, changed my mind a little bit in a scary way when he said that, well, you know, you have to understand that the Fed is the only game in town around the world, yeah. that none of the other central banks have any other ammunition because their rates are so low or negative. So really, you know, when you hear Jay Powell talking about looking at cross currents, which is to say global disruptions, by the way, caused by President Trump. That's right. Um, you know, then you have a situation where he is actually having to save the world. And we've seen this before from Washington, the Committee to Save the World, yeah. going back to the days of Alan Greenspan. But it's scary stuff, I think. Yeah, I mean, I guess I kind of look at it as, well, the Fed is, is looking at the world in a different way in the sense that it now views itself as an active part of the economy, right? So I think in the Alan Greenspan world, he would have said, well, the economy, because he was such a kind of firm, um, you know, Adam Smith guy, guy mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He says, well, the economy will do what it does. All we can do is control the money supply and therefore interest rates. So we must react to what the economy tells us to do. I actually think that the worldview that Powell has outlined and a number of his colleagues have outlined is, well, that's all good in theory, but in practice, the markets and the real economy reacts to what the Federal Reserve does and doesn't do. And so we actually could elongate or um, you know, strengthen a cycle that appears to be tired by being easier with our policy. I don't know if that'll work, but I think that's what they've told themselves um, is possibly the case here. Yeah, I don't know whether or not they have been or are supposed to be neutral when it comes to that line of thinking. Right. That's, that's potentially the difference. And of course, you run the risk of being, uh, being looked at that you're carrying water for the President of the United States, right? right? Because it becomes political. I mean, wow. why would you want to artificially? I mean, I guess you always want to, it's sort of like asking us, like, do you guys root for a bull market? People ask me that all the time. Yeah, right. And, and you know, I, I guess, yes, I guess we're supposed to say no, but in a way it's yes, right? Well, it's an interesting question, isn't it? It is. I mean, I think um, you know the answer is going to be unsatisfying. I think right. either way, right? Because you don't want to be just a hater of the market, right? Because that's bad for for people. People lose their jobs. People lose their their wealth. But on the other hand, you know, you don't want to just cheerlead it because then right. you end up with those bad uh, clips. We should note, of course, we're having this discussion as the markets hit record highs today. Yeah, so, I mean that's right. Uh, another one of those. One right? thing was clear. I mean, we do want to call it like we see it, right? Yeah. So in other words, we're not cheerleading, but it's like you know, I I guess people you know, could say that, boy, you, we like when things are growing, we don't like when things are not, but yeah. we will call it like we see it. Let me tell you, business journalism, interesting. Do we want to do, do, do the philosophy and ethics of business journalism here? Yeah, we're kind of doing that right now. We might now. lose our audience.